Nation. Welcome to the back to school edition of our Agents of Change series presented by State Farm and SAD. As young people head back to school this fall, we wanna make sure that both teens and their parents are equipped with the tips and knowledge they need to arrive home safely each day after classes and those extracurricular activities conclude. We're thrilled to have an all-star panel with us today. Please join me in welcoming our Agents of Change. First up, we have Pam Mowat from Michigan. Coming to us from Texas is Crystal Martinez. Jen Weibel from Nevada is here with us. And last but not least, we have Carmen Rivera from Virginia. Welcome everyone. In this episode, we're talking about the responsibility that comes with that set of keys. What are some top tips for young people to keep in mind as they get behind the wheel and make their way to and from school each day? Well, let's start by talking about that first car teens are responsible for. New drivers are at the highest risk of a crash, so providing them with a car that will keep them safe is a great first step for parents to take. In the past, it's been common to give a teen driver the hand-me-down vehicle, but that isn't always the safest option. Finding the right car can help your teen make wise decisions on the road and help protect them in case of a crash. Safety, reliability, and price are all things to consider. The task of driving should not be taken lightly. Parents, I cannot stress it enough. If you feel that your teen needs more time, needs more practice behind the wheel, talk to them about it. Both you and your teen driver should feel very confident, extremely comfortable in their ability to handle any road situations. So chances are, if you're not comfortable with your teen driving, they probably are too. Um, personally, I actually had somebody else teach me how to drive because my mom was not comfortable teaching me how to drive. So just give them practice and make it a comfortable situation for both of you. That's super true, Crystal. You know, it's so exciting to have uh, new car keys in your hand and a car and an open road before you. It really is thrilling, but it does come with some perks uh, for sure and some responsibilities. I have drivers myself. Uh, this is my daughter, Kira, who's 16, and my son, Cole, who's 18. My favorite perk is that now my daughter will actually go to the grocery store for me. So definitely some good things come with driving, but also some responsibility. Most teen crashes are totally preventable. Um, it's important that we as parents have ongoing conversations with our kids about driving safety. You know, that doesn't, that responsibility for us doesn't end as soon as they get their actual license. Every time a teen gets behind the wheel, it's important to set them up for success by having that environment inside the car uh, as safe as it can be for them. Absolutely, Jen. And teens should have the mindset that every time they set out on the next, their next destination that there are lives at stake. Think safety first always. Other drivers on the roadway may not, are definitely not mind readers. So help your team to routinely use their horn, headlights, and signals whenever necessary. Make sure they know where those items are and they are comfortable with using them at a moment's notice. Give them insight on how to best communicate their intentions. These are all excellent points, agents. I really like what Jen mentioned about creating a safe environment before leaving the driveway. Let's chat more about that. What are some of those risk factors for teen drivers? And how do we ensure that teens create a safe environment in the vehicle with every single trip? Distractions. In 2018, 2,841 people were killed in crashes involving a distracted driver. So before you even pull out of a driveway, eliminate as many distractions as you can. Set your playlist, bring up your Spotify, get your radio station, set up your Navi, and tuck your phone away out of sight, out of mind. If you're allowed to have passengers with you, don't allow them to become a distraction either. And the food has to wait until you get safely to your destination. And not a surprise here, but definitely a risk factor is speeding. Um, speeding for teen drivers um, is, is huge. Ultimately, it increases the distance needed to be able to stop the car while reducing reaction time to avoid a potential crash. Teens should be able to make it a habit to leave a little bit early to avoid the temptation of speeding. 
I've actually created that good habit now because unfortunately you're never on time, but you don't want to be in that temptation of speeding. So parents, be a good role model for them. Um, consider between the messages you tell that to your teenager, um, be a good example for them so that they can uh, mimic your good driving behaviors. Unfortunately, and surprisingly to me, seatbelt use is among the lowest in the teen driving group. Buckling up is one of the safest decisions that you can ever make when you get in a vehicle. And it's the law in every single state. Uh, to echo Crystal, we as parents need to be role models for our teens. Uh, we should be showing them that they need to buckle up in every seat, every time. Absolutely, Jen. Not every day will there be sunshine and blue skies, making for the perfect driving conditions. There will be times where your teen will be stuck in driving in adverse uh, weather conditions. They need to know how to handle each type of weather with a vehicle. As you help your teen to learn how to drive, take them out to practice in different types of conditions to help them gain experience in handling each scenario. Right, even the most mature teen needs time to gain that driving experience. As teens spend more time behind the wheel, refining their skills and being subjected to those different roadway scenarios, what's one thing that every teen can do to ensure that they're being a safe and responsible driver? Well, graduated driver licensing laws vary by state, but their intention remains the same, to help new drivers gradually learn to drive as they increase their skills with experience. So you should know the laws in your state. And parents, if you feel they aren't strict enough as your teen learns how to drive, you reserve the right to set stricter standards. Driving at night is also more dangerous than any other time of day. In fact, the risk of a fatal crash is three times greater at night. Make sure that your teenager is prepared and equipped with the knowledge they need so that they can succeed. Hit the road with your teen while it's dark and practice before they find themselves in a situation where they have no other option but to drive after the sun sinks below the horizon. I think if you give them enough practice, um, you'll be able to avoid any type of greater um, collisions. Um, they do happen at night, it's three times greater. That's true. Yeah. Another pro tip that we have is to make sure that you as a teen driver uh, allow a safe enough distance between you and the car in front of you. We have so many rear end accidents because there's not enough uh, distance to safely stop. Uh, parents, we can teach our kids the three second rule. So what you do is you pick a stationary object on the side of the road and you should be able to count three seconds between when the car in front of you passes that stationary object and when your vehicle passes. Uh, so count it out with them the first you know, couple of times so they get used to that. And as Carmen said, you know, every day is not just a beautiful blue sky driving day. Uh, that three seconds uh, should be increased to up to nine seconds if we have rainy roads or snow or any other driving hazards. Absolutely, Jen. And parents, please set ground rules and consequences, consequences for your teens. When they know what their limits are and what happens if those limits are pushed, hopefully they'll be more wise and responsible with the decisions that they make behind the wheel. Create a zero tolerance policy for both you and your teen. Sadly, sometimes there are no second chances. This includes drugs, alcohol, technology, and please, please, please teach your teens to always stow those cell phones before they go and eyes up, phones down. As always, panelists, you've given us a lot to think about today. As we wrap up, I'd be curious. What's one piece of advice you would give to teen drivers about the responsibility that comes with that set of keys? I think it's really important for any driver to be a defensive driver, fully aware of your surroundings at all times. But I would caution everyone not to get upset with other drivers or falling into any kind of road rage situation. Someone makes, makes you mad if they're tailgating, hand gestures, being obnoxious, whatever they're doing, just stay the course, stay calm, breathe, focus on where you need to go safely. It's just not worth the risk to yourself and others to get caught up in road rage. My best advice is to 
grab your cell phone when you get in the vehicle, put it in the glove compartment, turn it off, don't be distracted. It's not worth it. Your life, the families that are affected around you, they're most important, you're most important. Don't be distracted. One thing that we talk to our kids about frequently is that in this day and age, there is absolutely no excuse whatsoever for driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Um, right now, you can call an Uber, you can call a cab, you can call us and we'll come get you. Never put yourself at risk uh, by driving under the influence. We've actually added the Uber app onto both of our kids' phones so that if they try to call us and we're asleep or they can't get us, they have another out. And I like the idea of even having a, a safe word that my kids can text me if they're in a situation that they don't want to uh, you know, speak about, hey, I'm uncomfortable, come pick me up. So I think that's important to have that continued conversation with your kids. Thank you, Jen. I love the idea of the Uber app. I think that that's fantastic. And um, uh, children, especially if they're out with their friends, it's just a safe way for them to get home uh, without drawing um, uh, attention to themselves. Um, I also, you know, don't participate in distractive driving. Um, you're going to have friends in the car and they're going to be wanting the music up loud and talking and, you know, throwing around um, paper or beach ball or something in the car. You know, stand up and say, hey, I need you to tone it down a little bit. I'm trying to get you there safely. Um, and then for our parents, I think it's always a good idea for your teens to get in the habit of taking the kids so that they can experience new things on the roadway while you're with them. So thanks so much and stay safe, Sad Nation. Agents, these are great tips all around. I again want to thank our esteemed panel from State Farm. And of course, you Sad Nation, our followers, for helping us share the rural road as teens head back to school this fall. That's all the time we have for now. Be safe every trip, every time.